Hello, hello. Yes, working. Just mute that. So, good morning, everybody. My name is Osa, and it's Saturday. So, we are playing Farm Sim 19 on Oakfield Farm for some reason. Oh, no desktop noise because I have the game minimized. Let's try that again. Yeah. Brief trigger. So, you catch me up at the store because we're doing some of this. Not our fields. But, uh, after buying all that uh, haymaking equipment, haymaking equipment, well, kind of, yeah. Um, I feel our bank balance is a little short, so we are going to do a second contract. We were way below. We were down about 30 odd thousand at the end of last week. So I finished off collecting all the bales and came up this end of the woods and finished off a fairly lucrative uh, um, fertilizing contract and I now have a second one so yay goodness <coughs> Oi. I believe that this one is for field 41 is down the end here. Yep. And it looks like this particular fertilizer tank, I bought it as refillable, so it's a permanent map object. Don't know what it was, I think last week I tried one and it didn't, it disappeared. So I'm wondering whether there is an issue with the refillable tanks where during a game save they may go away or they may reset to standard tanks so that when you empty them they disappear. rather than um, whatever it was I was trying to do, fold it up again. So today is an early start because Mrs. Osa needs to go and donate some blood for testing and they all close at midday and the one we have to go to is half an hour away. So we're going to run to about, guessing about 10.30. And um, that'll give us time to get there, join the queue, wait to be called, etc, etc. So we'll see how that all goes when, when that happens. Um, this is... Covering quite nicely. Do like this aspect of um, precision farming, where it will show you where you've been with the sprayer, and it still treats the contract fields as. Um, base game, um, fertilizer ploughing requirements, etc. I'm not sure how that works out for, you know, we did in Farm Sim 17 on Law Folds, we would at the beginning of the year at spring we would look for harvest uh, sorry ploughing contracts plough the those fields 
and then we'd contract for planting, we'd contract for three stages of fertiliser, and then towards the end of summer we'd buy the field. And thus we would get 100% yield bonus on those fields without us actually having paid to plant them. So we've got media income back from the field we just bought, plus we put in all the work and got paid for it and reap to the benefit of all the uh, all the fertilizer and stuff but with precision farming I'm not sure how that works out because these fields are all going to be triple fertilized but if we bought them then their nitrogen contact is going to suck their uh, pH is going to be bad <coughs> That doesn't really matter that much. Kind of thinking that uh, we'll probably we'll probably end up buying the fields during the winter, since we just don't have the uh, the money right now to buy any of these fields. make this sprayer wider too. It's, it, I, frankly, it's not a big deal. It doesn't, e even with the narrowest setup, it doesn't take too long to actually get a field sprayed. Oh, this stay narrow sliver there. Never mind. It really doesn't matter, right? It's, it needs to be about 90 lots percent covered, as long as we do that. Um, we get paid. Kind of right on the limits on that left side. Actually, we're overlapping now. Uh, what I'll do is I'll try and follow the uh, the seedbed. west across the field as we go and then if we have to come back and fill that triangle we'll start it from the top where it's at the widest point we are into early summer halfway through the first day nice quite relieved that our clover matured so that we now have clover bales done. Haven't done the, uh, haven't checked on the hay yet. I'm going to have to uh, figure that out too. Let's try and keep that straight. I think maybe on the way back with this tractor we'll run across to uh, the <coughs> was it field 25 or thereabouts and check on the drying state of that clover. Kind of don't expect it to be hay yet. I might leave this tractor out there so we've got somewhere to uh, Teleport to 
then we can get back to the farm and start working our grass. Because that's the plan for the rest of the day, is uh, we need to get our grass done. Now there are some good baling contracts out, as well as these uh, 10,000 pound spraying contracts. Since we now have the uh, the kit to do that, um, there's nothing to stop us taking those contracts out and making quite some serious amounts of money, especially since we'll get bonus from all the excess bales that we create. No, we won't. Yes, we will. No, we won't. Well, kind of yes we will, but we have to take them back to our yard to uh, ferment. So we can stack them with ours, because all of ours are going to be... Well, not all of ours. A sizable percentage of ours are going to be destined for the BGA. Since we've done the clay, actually we've got to be careful. We're going to have to uh, pull out the actual clover silage <coughs> in order to uh, um, to keep some on hand to feed the sheep. Unfortunately, we did create a couple of grass silage bales, which maybe we can use as sheep food too. Doesn't matter, grass and clover silage all sells for the same amount out of the BGA, so we're not losing anything out there. And I presume they all make the same amount of, excuse me, um, digestate which is one of the main reasons why we do uh, silage. And I haven't started making notes on uh, crop nitrogen requirements. Because the hydro higher nitrogen crops will be doing oilseed, radish and silage. I don't know what the adder for oilseed radish is, so that's another unknown at the moment. See, I haven't done any sciencing of uh, precision farming outside of this series. And since this was a fresh start on this map, basically started with all the fields at not zero pH but yeah basically crap pH and zero nitrogen. Um, some of the grass fields we ploughed in which gave us a boost to our nitrogen and then I did put a slurry down on all the fields. <coughs> which gave us another boost to our nitrogen and that actually might be a little bit of a problem well that was a problem for our clover I'm pretty sure we're going to get a better um, yield from our clover next year oh, this, is, this is a little bit sad because I can't put this on automatic, if I put this on automatic it would dump the tanks in minutes. But because we can't put it on automatic, we're actually wasting fertilizer on the overlap. And there's two thirds of the boom width is overlap here. How's the percentage? We're at 95. I could skip this. Jump down to uh, 
the big triangle at the other end. Enough to be decadent, decadent. Okay, I probably don't want to be cruising down to there. Fairly certain we will probably complete this fairly short order and get paid. 99. And come on. Let's do this. Okay then. And we just started feeding from the front tank by about 18 litres, 15 litres. Okay, we're done there. We get paid. So there's That's more than 10,000, 39. Oh, right, that's that field over there. But then we have bailing 28, bailing 32, bailing 20. That would rapidly replenish our bank balance. For right now, we'll take this back to the store and park it there. With no, um, I yeah, I probably won't. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll we'll do my original intention. We'll take this over to the clover field which we tedded. jump back to the farm and start the grass cut. If you decide to do another fertilizing contract, we'll uh, We'll grab the Fent and uh, take that to the score because we still got that IPC to bring back to the main yard. So we don't want to lose that. I won't have a pipe. Well, doesn't actually matter. You don't have to have a pipe even with the manure system. It's just realism. I would need to bring a pipe with me. Well, I could strap one on the back of the Ivor Williams trailer. And once again, stuck behind heavy traffic.
So we have some more information on Farm Sim 22 Seasons. And I must say, not. It's going to be a different experience. So that's not necessarily a better experience, and it's not necessarily a worse experience, just different. So, not sure how I feel about that. I like the way Realismus' uh, Seasons works. And we've had you know, the same or similar for both um, 17 and 19. So, there's a lot of familiarity there, which um, It'll be a new learning curve with um, Giants version. Not sure how much they're going to borrow from Realismus's stuff. I mean, obviously, there's going to be passage of time. Um, hopefully, there will be obviously planting season. Uh, Go fertilizing season, harvesting season, and sit around and look at the snow season. With the graphical differences. But apart from that, I kind of am not sure. Because the trouble with this tractor is I can't tell what's here. believe that's still semi-dry. So we'll turn that off. We're looking for something a little bit more yellow. Let's grab the egg cup, actually. Uh, who's got the baler? Oh, he's already out there. Thinking ahead last week, once we finished I think I also set up the swath on the uh, mower here. So everything is set up good and correctly. So there we go. Oh, where are you going, dude? the handbrake on. There might be a button for sticking the handbrake on. I don't know. Let me turn that on. I need to lower it. And at the back. Lower that. Turn that on. That's all working. And that's the collection. That's the thing. Unfold. amount of horsepower but we are all good now. Bridge full drive, handbrake off. And I don't know how to turn the handbrake off. That's just uh, essentially what happens. Basically there's there's a little arrow uh, top middle of the speedometer and when I change reverse drive um, which is a toggle, the arrow will switch down to indicate that go is reverse and up to indicate that go is forwards. If I leave the vehicle stationary for long enough, then it will, um, there'll be a little sort of prohibited sign, a uh, circle with a red line through it red circle with a red line through it. And that basically indicates that the handbrake is on. But you have to hold the tractor stationary or jump out of it or something in order to get that to actually be a thing. So it looks like we didn't get the seed all the way to the edge. Now I'm not too worried about 
the uh, accuracy of this mowing event. We are going outside of the field boundary. It's all grass. And by going outside the field boundary, it's that part of the grass is not a brilliant yield. It looks like for the most part we're getting a good 125% yield. And that's because grass actually has a high nitrogen requirement, or higher nitrogen requirement. It's not high, but it's higher. And <coughs> while cutting it replenishes it some, I think. We could check that after the first loop. Here the engine revs climbing, but we're really not struggling here. Actually, we're going to need to slow down anyway, because we've kind of left the case behind. So let's take a look the yield on this. We are on field three, so we've got lonely sand over here, which I think is fairly bad. Um, this is sandy loam, also not ideal. We have loam in the middle and silty clay at the bottom. Um, the pH has 6.75 5.75 on the edge. So we got 5.75 on the edge down from 6. So we are actually losing pH. No, that's to be expected. That's come down 6.25 from 6.5. The 6.5 here is down from 6.75 there, and then the 6.75 there is down from 7. So pH is dropping as expected. Whoa! But you'll see that we're going from 200, 180, 160, depending on the soil type, all the way down to, not 80, 60. That is a lot of uh, nitrogen we need to feed back to the soil.